Okay, I'm just going to do a short video here. Um, this is an RE4R01 Alpha um, transmission out of a uh, non-turbo 300ZX or 240SX, also using the Xterra Frontier, basically most of the rear-wheel drive Nissan transmissions from 88 and up. Um, it's just a quick short vid video on identifying um, an issue once you've broke down the transmission. Um, the way I've got it laid out is kind of how it comes apart. You want to make sure you have a good clean workspace. Um, and a manual is always important. But to uh, identify issues real quick, we're going to go through on the uh, forward clutch set. It appears as though this transmission has been rebuilt recently. Um, the name brand Robestos is still visible on the forward. Um, there, hardly see it there. Uh, on the forward clutch, um, the actual clutch uh, clutch discs themselves or clutch frictions themselves, name is still available. It's also seen on the um, overrun clutch as well. So everything in the forward drum is good. Um, what the issue with this transmission was, is, is you can see, this is the uh, high clutch friction. This is one of them. The disc coloration is significantly different than the other transmission, or than the other friction. And then the, um, the, the material is coming off, uh, which also lets you know that it's breaking down. Um, so that's, that's one way to identify lower friction. Also, most manuals give you a thickness specification. Uh, right there um, and uh, these do not meet it but uh, any kind of time you see discoloration or material separation on you want to go ahead and replace that friction anyways more than likely you're, if you're going to pull it apart you're going to replace every bit of friction this transmission was recently rebuilt by somebody else then the transmission was brought to me to repair so this is kind of where we're at um, this one the, the high clutch frictions are are gone for the most part and then in the reverse friction, there's leoparding on the steels. That's where there's been extreme heat causing discoloration of the metal where it stopped retaining that friction. And then one broken friction disc. Then uh, the other issue with this transmission is the actual front planetary. Something happened. The front pin started coming out of this gear and rode on the... Uh, on the hub of the the rear planetary um, so this front planetary um, carrier is going to be replaced and then uh, the friction in the reverse drum and the friction in the high clutch which is where this came from um, the overrun friction and forward friction and then the let's see over here on the case the low and reverse friction are all in good shape. I've already pulled those out. See all the clean shiny fluid in there and the heavily greased seals. That's all been done to to fix the other issues. But the uh, the the only problem with this transmission that I can see is that something. I, I think what happened was was the uh, the sun gear was not fully engaged into the reverse drum, and that caused the front planetary to wear out since they ride on each other. So I think this was rebuilt and then whoever was putting the reverse drum in didn't get it snug up in there when they were tightening the band down. Um, the band itself is fine. So that's what rides here on the outside of this reverse drum. Um, but uh, I kind of wanted to go through and do a quick show you how I diagnose what's going on with this thing and then what I do um, during installation. Now during installation I take all the steels and clean them up with 400 grit. So that gives a It gives a, um, a spot for the frictions to grab onto. You want to just kind of do non-directional patterns. Um, and then you alternate um, steels. Now this top ring is the is a measured ring to get your spacing like you want. Um, and then like this, we're going to add a clutch in here to this one to get it back into spacing. Give it a little more, um, a little more surface area, friction surface area. Now the more clutches you have or... The more surface area that's gripping will give you uh, more torque capability to a certain degree um, for this. So you just alternate um, bottom ring, steel clutch, steel clutch, steel clutch, on and on and on and on and on. And then at this point we're at where we take the next steel. Now I'm anal so I marked a spot there on the housing with green paint where I put the label from the steel where it tells me it's an auto steel made in USA 
so I guess I'm not going to want to focus. There we go. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can just chuck them in there however you want. Um, and then I try to use my finger to line them up. It's going to it's going to give you a better, a much easier uh, time when you're putting it back together. Sorry here, I'm trying to hold the camera and locate this. But yeah, you're going to just do friction, clutch, friction, clutch. Um, or I'm sorry, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel. Then once you get the top locator ring in there and you make sure they're all seated, um, oh yeah, before you put the frictions in, just soak them in clean, clean, brand new transmission fluid, nice little pan there. Um, it looks like there's dirt in there, but that's just junk from the towel underneath. Um, clean fluid in a clean bucket, um, soak them for 10, 20 minutes. I just, I just throw them in there before I get to that set, and by the time I get to them, it's been 20, 30 minutes. Um, alternate them like that, and then the lock ring goes in, which is probably going to be nearly impossible to do one-handed. until it seats in the groove, just like that. And then this one, there's a secondary lock ring at the top. This is very difficult one-handed. Um, all right, so the, um, the uh, front drive drum is done. Um, the the bearing in there and the race seems like it's good. No abnormal discoloration. The red tinge at the bottom that may look kind of copper on the screen is actually just transmission fluid. Um, see, it's not uh, not copper from where the bearings wore through. And that's kind of what you're looking for. And then, um, I mean. I'm sure somebody, there's plenty of videos on here of someone probably doing a step-by-step -step on it, but if you get a book, you take your time, cleanliness is the most important thing, get the casing broke down, um, I, uh, I just made a little housing adapter, it's just a crudely welded together angle iron with quarter inch rolled steel, some drilled holes, that just, that mounts the casing very crudely, by the way. Um, and just make it to where it can be bolted to an engine stand like that, just a couple holes through it, and that way you have a nice little jig to hold your casing while assembly everything. It's much simpler to put everything inside the transmission when it's standing up, and then now it can rotate too when you go to do valve body work. Um, other than that, take your time, pay attention to the instructions, um, replace what needs to be replaced, uh, get a whole kit, put it in there even if it's recently been done. Uh, I don't recommend kind of doing it halfway, but, you know, this particular instance, this is how we're going to do it. Anyways, um, that's all I've really got for you. Any questions or comments, please list them below, and I'll try to get to them when I can. All right.